Greetings, I am Crispy, a Gaian, Mayan, Pleiadian, Emissary of Light. I am another you, you are another me, we are one, one Godsciousness. And that shape right there is what I'm here to tell you about today. This is called the Hunab Kum. There is a stop gap after the apostrophe. Kou. <laughs> Say it with me, it's fun. Hunab Kou. Ooh, Hunab Kou. Ooh, I like it. That's one name for it. There were others, as you will see. Now, this is the symbol associated to the Maya and also the Aztec, which is not actually their name. They were the Mixtec or the Nahuatl, that's the language anyway, of the Mexico City area, which we should be calling Teotihuacan. That's the first place that the symbol came to light of the Western world, and by that I mean the Spanish conquistadors. Doing some research, we find here on the wiki page for Codex Maglia Beciano that it was written in about 1550, and my instinct tells me that the Mixtec people or the Nahuatl people, drew all the images, and the Spanish labeled them in Spanish. Duh. Sorry. Now, scrolling down to the external links section, we see these two, which actually go to the same page, FAMSI, the Foundation for the Advancement of Mesoamerican Studies, and you can see the document clearly laid out here. And after a title page and some blah blah pages that were definitely not Mayan, BAM! The very first page has the Hunab Ku. Or rather, they wrote Til Matl Teca Katl, which is the Nahuatl language in the Roman alphabet. Did you forget that? The alpha bet is Roman. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <clears throat> right. Now, then there's their translation. The devil's mantle. <laughs> what? Do you see the devil here? I see some beautiful flowers, some berries maybe, and a delightful design of cosmic complexity, which they called the devil's mantle. Mm. Now, mantle probably meant to them at the time law or rule or something extremely powerful and unavoidable in a way, like, you know, gravity kind of thing. That's, that's what I'm interpreting their meaning of the word mantle 500 years ago, okay? So, right below that, we see the same design with a nearly naked fellow, arms outstretched in a relaxed position, and the words Til matl o manta, again the Nopatl language, and then nono alcaltipos, or something. It's a little bit hard to see, and I'm not quite sure what that means. Sorry. <laughs> uh, a few pages later, we see what is possibly the very best version of the design from 500 years ago, almost, and the words Manta de Agua Axana, or Ashana, the spider mantle of water. What? <laughs> now, immediately here, I have to give you my opinion that what the 
Spanish conquistadors were being told may not have been the truth. For, you see, the way things happen, let's say a group of marauding people come into your village and torture, rape, and murder your priests, your priestesses, your shaman, your kings and your queens, and then they leave. And then they come back ten years later, and they burn all your books. And then they leave, and then they come back, and they say, Hey, so, what's your little religion thing all about anyway? And so, people draw them incredible diagrams of such beauty and sophistication. Maybe they tell them some funny things for those names. I don't know. I'm just saying, okay? I believe the images to be pure, and that's all I believe in the Codex Maglia Beckiano. <laughs> so we may presume that this document, along with approximately three other codices, was taken back to Spain and then probably Rome, the big boss's house, the Vatican. And somehow it ended up in this guy's collection about a hundred years later. And it's still in Italy, by the way, just like all the other codices are not in possession of the people who made them. Isn't that interesting? But we forgive them. Today, by the way, is Hun Kib. Hun is the same Hun as Hunabku. It means one, and it also means oneness, and it also means unity, and it also means the beginning, and it means the divine creator and creation and wholeness. Huna. Huna ab ku. Ku means basically divinity or God or deity. So Huna ab ku is like saying the one creator or the one and only giver of movement and measure, as we shall learn a little bit later. Let's go back to what we know from Wiki. The mysterious Hunabku appears to disappear for hundreds of years, and apparently the first reappearance is on the cover of this book, The House of Dawn, by Mara Ellis Ryan, in the year 1914. How it got there, we may never know. But the book is a romance novel that was set in Mexico. But, quickly looking back at the Maglia Beckiana wiki page and scrolling down again, we see that the book of the life of the ancient Americans was published in 1903. So it's quite likely that whoever published Mara's book was aware of the symbol, and somehow that got transferred to her book. I don't think she herself personally was like, yeah, um, on the cover of my book, I want this symbol. I don't know. I'm sure none of us will ever know. But it's there, 1914, and it's pretty cool. Next! 
probably the next time that that symbol seems to have graced the eyes of humanity was on this book, The Mayan Factor, by Jose Arguelles. Oops. Our way, yes. In 1987, but unfortunately, his version immediately confused the world by adding the Chinese I Ching to the symbol, as though it were somehow ancient Mayan wisdom. That book contained dozens of mistakes, lies, and obfuscations along with countless truths, a typical false light technique. Jose said that he was sold a satchel in a market in Mexico with the Hunab Ku on it, and that was his first introduction to it, which may or may not have been true, <laughs> knowing him a consummate liar as he was also told a lot of truth. <laughs> it's his Mayan birthday in 10 days from now, <laughs> by the way. He is a tone 10 of the serpent, manifesting serpent, and oh, is he ever a manifester. <laughs> More about that later. <laughs> I promise you. Now, for oodles more of information about him and the dream spell and the 13 moon calendar you can see this video but i personally believe he was somehow in receipt of a very large amount of information that had been previously stored in the vatican vaults i don't know how but Somehow, he got lots of information that had not seen the light of day in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So, that's what we know. Now, one year before the Mayan Factor came out, and... <laughs> Here I think we have to stretch the word of Mayan to also include the meaning of illusion. <laughs> because if you just go with that, then yeah, there was nothing fake in his book. It was all illusion. <laughs> Fine. So, one year before his book came out, oh, excuse me, just have to... Keep the fire going, baby. Every time I do a video, and... Oh, hello. There we go. Good. And a reading for a client. I light the candle. I say the prayer to all of the Mayan deities, including each of the 20 glyphs each of the 13 tones, and the Hunab Ku. It's just the way I am. So, where was I? 1986, in Spanish, came the book Secrets of Mayan Science Religion. This English version came out in 1990. But uh, one year before that illusion book came out, Hunbat's men gave us this one. And in it, he talked a lot about the Hunab Ku. And I'm going to read some of that for you. The very first mention of it was in the introduction. This is what I... <laughs> This is what I do to my, my books. All right. Uh, the very first mention of it. The Maya did not formulate a god with a determined and determining personality, as in other mythologies. Hunab Ku symbolizes form and energy, that is, the soul 
and the spirit. This unique giver of movement and measure represents the absolute being, the architect of the universe. All right, now, next! There's so many mentions of the Hunabku in this book, I, I'm not going to read them all to you. Ooh, ooh, I went a little bit crazy on this page too, look at that. <laughs> Alright, here we go. The Maya classified the Supreme as Hunabku, the only giver of movement and measure, and proudly represent the concept with a square superimposed on a circle, a synthesis of universal geometry based on the human body. Okay, it's not really just a square and a circle, is it? <laughs> As we saw from the very first recording of it, it's way more than that. What is it? Let's 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 go into that a little bit here. This is my uh, four color version because the Mayan calendar has red, white, blue, yellow, so I just put them on here like that. Um, looking closely at it, you obviously see the four directions, but there's also another four. So for me, that's the solstice and equinox and the quarter days that go by various names in various other cultures. But I believe that our annual trip around the sun is most obviously divided into four and then also obviously divided into another four. If you go one quarter of the year, that's approximately 91 days, which is exactly, just let me get something here for you, come here, bam, seven of these, seven times 13 is 91, exactly between the solstice and the equinox. Sometimes there's another little day, and that's fine. Okay? Because this planet isn't exactly on a 360. Wouldn't that be so nice if it was? Then we'd have to blame all our problems on something else. <laughs> so, Hunapku. My version, my personal version, is in the middle of a 13 petaled lotus flower, but I'm not here to talk about me. <sighs> now back to my book. And Mr. Hunbat's men. <gasps> By the way, I attended a one day workshop with him in uh, 2001 the 8th month, 25th day, and he wrote, Con respar Resparo, res I'm not really sure, I think it means with respect, with solar respect, Con respecto solar para Cristobal, he called me Cristobal, like San Cristobal de las Casas, but that's a Spanish name, so I don't even care, all right, Christopher Whatever, that's a Christian name. Just call me Crispy, okay? <laughs> this video isn't about me, damn it. <clears throat> In this way, the Mayan philosopher attains oneness with God, Hunabku, knowing that God is energy, and energy is God. For this reason, the giver of movement is also the giver of measure, because in reality there can be no movement that does not have measure. Mm. As an example of this, we say that life is movement and death is measure. 
you see here how the complex yet simple duality of the symbol includes life and death. It also obviously includes what you could call the yin-yang symbol in the deep center. But again, it's I, I believe this symbol to be the most elegant symbol ever created on Earth, or was it? Ladies, hello. <clears throat> now, moving right along. It was inspired by all that is sacred to the Maya, by that sacred god, the only giver of movement and measure, adored by the name of Hunabku from the earliest of Mayan times, many millennia ago, when we lived in harmony on this continent. Although, to be fair, the Maya were a rather warring and violent culture, so if you could live in harmony with war and human sacrifice, then more power to you. <laughs> right. Next. Oh, look at chapter five. All right. The whole chapter five talks about how the Hunabku, which is the supreme deity, the architect of the universe, gave humanity seven powers to become Quetzalcoatl Kukulkan, which means ascend, which means to overcome the ego, fully enacting all seven chakras to transcend the 3D body. Which is why I believe I was given this information. It was beamed into my head that every 13 days follows this chakra pattern. That's what those colors are doing there. Today, being Hun is the root head chakra, which also means everything. It is the very root of your being. Now, what else can I tell you? I want to read this whole book to you, but you know what? Order your own. Goodness me. All right. Look at this page. That's exciting. Here we go. Hunabku, which is actually unnameable, unpronounceable, invisible, and should be retained only in memory... But we've got the symbol and the name. It's the root of the sacred of all things, the only giver of movement and measure, represented by a circle and a square. Hunabku for the Maya is the center of everything, including the sexual act when we engender children. Hunabku is here and there the force around which everything moves. Hun is represented by a dot. Thus, we have Hun ab Ku as one, or the dot as the manifestation of everything. This reasoning reveals that when the Mayan philosopher thought of the number Hun, it was thought that in Hun was everything because Hunabku is everything and is in everything. Oh. All right, so that's all I know. But here's something new that came to me. The Hunabku is an image that 
When you relax your mind and envision it as a sphere, picture that shape as a sphere. You can see that it's actually in motion and it is also quite possible to see that it is a representation of the Taurus energy moving in and out and around and down and in and out and around in all directions at all times. I believe the Hunabku is a Taurus and I also believe that if you relax your mind and see that the Dzogin is also a representation of a Taurus. This is my belief. I have no proof. <laughs> so, my friend, I hope you've enjoyed this little video, and now I will conclude with the prayer to the Hunabku from this book. Every morning this is said to the Hunabku. With the rising of the sun, we receive your words, Master, because with your light we awaken and contemplate everything. We also contemplate ourselves because we are your children. This is why at dawn we surrender ourselves to you, so that you may protect us and teach us your wisdom. It is your visage which looks upon us and contemplates us, Master. This is why we surrender to you, Father and Master Hunabku, and we surrender our children, just as our parents surrendered us to you. Master Hunabku, you know what you make of us. We ask you, Master Hunabku, to show us the path. Help us, Master Hunabku, to regain fraternal love. We ask this of you, Master, giver of movement and measure so that we do not lose ourselves, O oh, Master Hunabku. And this is the prayer to the Hunabku for the evening. Already the Master Sun has set and the Mistress Night has arisen. The butterflies shine amid the heavenly flowers. Our thoughts are in you, dear Hunabku, because you are our hope. Into your hands we surrender ourselves. You know what you will make of us, Hunabku. The night, Hunabku, is your hand which closes, and within it everything happens. As the seed buds, as the flower emerges and blossoms, in this way is born the human being. In this way everything occurs, in the hands of Hunabku. Take care of me, giver of movement and measure. Take care of me. To you I surrender my body and my spirit. I wonder how old that prayer is. <sighs> so much mystery surrounding the Maya, isn't there? I think that's maybe why we love it so much. In closing, I will tell you my brief little definition and part of my prayer that I use every single time. Thank you, Hunabku, the one and only giver of movement and measure, heart of sky, heart of earth, the great central sun, and black hole at the epicenter of the omniverse. We are here to do your work. Thank you for your continued energetic blessings.
Nakesh Alakim Namaste.